Hi guys, Katie here for module seven. Um, so I chose question one, discuss how communication technology has evolved both generally and as discussed in the text and in your working professional life. Um, so I think communication technology has evolved greatly over time. Page 319 talks about the range of communication that the co-author Mark went through in his career from typewriters to computers to email and so on. And it kind of got me thinking about the differences that I've seen in medical offices throughout my life. So as a kiddo, I remember going to like the dentist or the doctor's office and seeing walls upon walls of physical files that were how medical records were kept back then. Um, I might be dating myself. <laughs> but um, now you would never expect to see something like that in a doctor's office because everything is kept electronically. It's all in the cloud and in their medical record system um, and nothing is kept like that physically anymore because it poses a huge threat for you know HIPAA violations or um, things like that. So um, now in the medical offices we use electronic medical records that are often shared between organizations in like a cloud-based system if you use the same um, system. Um, we use EPIC for our medical record system. So if one of my patients has surgery in Oregon at Oregon State University, I'm able to see the information in my system about the surgery that they had in Oregon. So I can read all of the operation details and what happened and um, all of that fun stuff. Um, it's really, really helped that... Um, network communication, which is actually why I'm going to answer question two, because I thought that that response was actually really good for question two, which is explain your personal and professional experiences um, with the interaction of new technologies and communication as they relate to network organization. So that rec that example of medical records being shared through networks that aren't necessarily the same organization is a perfect example for this. Um, <clears throat> network organizations are defined on page 327 as the organization of organizations. So integrated across formal boundaries through shared communication. So my organization regularly communicates with other medical organizations through the use of our medical records software. In addition, we also use email and fax. Our department's super tiny. I think I've probably mentioned that before. There's five of us total. And so since we are so specialized, we work very closely with other networks who help our patients as well, who we refer our patients to. So if they aren't on that same medical record system, we have a really good communication base through email, phone, some of them, but generally email. Um, we're on a first name basis with most of them. So we've kind of created our own mini network um, just with our small little group and then the people we refer our patients to. A lot of times if something comes up or there's a problem, we know immediately who to contact and where and how. Um, so yeah, it's, it's worked out really well for us, but it's nice when somebody's on that same medical record system because it saves that extra step of going through an email Everything's already in the patient's medical record. You don't have to copy and paste anything. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of the best examples I could come up with. So I wanted to just continue on and answer question two with that. Um, <clears throat> and then for the case study question, it says to, let's see, what are at least three concepts? So... The 25 nonprofits could be considered a network when looking at the taxonomy of organizational configurations on page 323. There's a table there. Derek and Monica acted as a hub or a central unit trying to coordinate communication norms between the units. It kind of seems as if that maybe should have been done by the task force on homelessness since the um, case study said that they were basically the only group that... Um, kind of coordinated everybody, I guess. Um, and eventually they did end up creating their own website, the task force for on homelessness did. So um, it probably would have been really beneficial for Derek and Monica to involve them in this project that they came up with. 
Um, and then the next concept is um, page 324, the organizational aspect of technology. Um, and that's seen in the ways that organizations design or customize a technology to meet their needs. But in this scenario, Derek and Monica took it kind of upon themselves without determining the needs of all of the 25 organizations. Um, it sounds like maybe not all of them felt the need to communicate the way that Derek and Monica thought that they might need to be. So that's definitely something they should have considered when trying to create this huge organization network um, or communication network. And then the third one, page 317, technological imperative is the idea that if it can be done, it should be done. And that idea overrides other ethical considerations. So when I was thinking about this, <clears throat> Derek and Monica spent a ton of time and money trying to come up with this communications network to help 25 nonprofit organizations communicate better. But ethically speaking, is that something they should have been spending their time and money on? Could that time and money have been spent better on helping the homeless in another way? Um, I mean, there's a lot of reluctancy on these organizations to use that, that communication technology that was used or created. Um, and in fact, most of them didn't even use it. And they wasted all that time and money without even making sure it was something that they needed and something that the homeless doesn't really benefit from at all. So I think that that ethically speaking, they probably should have thought this through a little bit better as well. That's what I got. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say this week. Have a great night.